Mike Powers And um, this talk, let's talk about your relationship with, with your brother. Um, what yeah. kind of brother was Big Pun to you? Oh, oh my God. Uh, growing up, um, he, was, he wasn't easy. I'll tell you that for sure. Um, he was very, he was, uh, how, how can I say? He was a jokester. Okay. Um, he, he liked to, he, you know, he, he used to get rough with me too. You know, I'm not going to lie. He used to get rough with me too. Knock the wind out of my back. <laughs> you know, he's done it. But at the same time, come back and cry and say, I love you. I'm so sorry I hurt you. It's like, you know, something he was struggling with. Um, yeah. I know a lot of it had to do with domestic violence that was in our house, constant like fighting, my, my mom and my father. Um, but he, he was very protective. For example, my parents were in their own world, um, doing their own things. And my brother was the one that was like, Nikki, it's seven o'clock, get in the house. You know, Nikki, it's getting dark, get in the house. So he stood up, you know, for that. Um, when money, when money was tight, there was really no food and stuff like that. He went out there and came back and like, here, Nikki, I got a sandwich. You know, Nikki, I got, I took a cookie from the, from the, from here, you know, here's a cookie. So he always would like taking care of me. I can, I can never take that from him. He always, always took care of me. Always. But he was just a little, a little, a little bit overboard with protective. I'll give, I'll give you that. <laughs> I don't think there's any such thing as being overboard when your brother looking out with for me. your sister now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that that that's our job. But um, what was it? What was it like when when Pun first gained notoriety? What was that like? Well, when he first when he popped off, finally, I had already uh, gone to go to college. I went to Bethune Cookman College, um, in Daytona Beach. Yeah, you went to the HBCU. Yep. Okay. Yes, I, was, go ahead. I was a wild. I was a wildcat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl. Okay, because I was down in Virginia at another one. But uh, okay. go ahead. Yeah, so I was, I was, um, I had moved to Daytona Beach. Um, I, you know, I was a teenager. I was like nineteen. I was going on nineteen. I was working at Checkers Fast Food down the street from the school. And one day, I get a phone call, and I knew my brother was pursuing the music, but you know, nothing had popped off yet. Um, he was always going to uh, his boy's house. I can't remember his name, but he had a garage with me, with all, all the tools. And always doing the music there. And he used to tell me, you know, Nikki, I watch. I'm a pop off. I'm a this and that. I'm like, okay. Well, one day he gives me that call and he's like, put on the radio. And I was like, well, hold on. I'm about to get in my car. I'm getting off of work. And he's like, next minute, I um introducing new artists, you know, and I'm starting screaming. Ah! <laughs> and I put my window down. I start yelling to everyone. I'm like, that's my brother. That's my brother. And then people are looking at me like I'm nuts. But I was so proud. I was so proud. I was like, wow, he did it. What was and that song? That, um, I keep saying the same thing. The Walter Scarface in the background, the video. Oh, that was the um the um you said I'm getting Scar old because I'm yeah, the I'm, scar they had the the, 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 the back the, the backdrop of the Scarface or you know, the movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm old. Yeah, too. Like, oh, okay. the imagery. Yeah, I'm forget. But he became he became a legend. After his first single popped, like he was, it was like overnight. Yeah, it was like overnight. I couldn't believe it. And then what really was wake up call was the day that we saw him on the Grammy Awards. Mm. Oh my God, I I remember that day because that day was um, my whole family was going and I was gonna go too, but I declined. I said I don't want to go to the awards. I'm gonna stay home because I had a terrible dream the night before of like a, a plane crash or whatever. So, so I told all my family, I said, don't go because I had this dream. They were like, oh, hell no, I'm going anyway. I don't care. <laughs> so, they, so they went, but I stood and, um, you know, they, they enjoyed themselves. And I watched the Grammy. I saw when he performed with, um, oh, God, Brandy. Mm. He performed and came out for Brandy. And, oh, my God, that was just like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, oh, my God, this is this is real. You know, yeah, yeah, your brother you know, on TV at the Grammys. It's kind of real now. I, I was so proud. So I was like a mom. I was so proud, you know. But one thing I could definitely say is that I am where I am today because he instilled in me, you know, not to fear nothing. You know, not, you know, if you want something, go get it. You know, that you know, all those all those things that kept me strong is because I thank him. And that's why, you know, I was able to say he called it. He said, you know. Nikki, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you out, but I'm not gonna help you out yet. Let me help out these family members first because I know you're gonna be okay. 
You know, and, and at the time I was like, damn, you gotta help the ones that don't want to help themselves mm. instead of right. so he was like, so that's what he did, and he was right. I, I became successful on my own. And salute to you for that. Um thank you. What was he like after the fame hit? I mean, just mm-hmm. as personally, like what was his personality? Did he change up at all or no, he didn't. He didn't change at all. Um, he still was humble. He still act the same. He, he didn't change. He he stood the same person. He stood is the same person. That, is it true that he won a lot of money? That he got a lot of money in a settlement. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it was. And it was after that that he started to gain weight because he was driving in his nice new car rather than walking like he had been. Is that true? Yeah, that's mostly true. Yeah. So um, when he was young, um, I was I was small at the time. Um, I don't re- I don't recall it. But from the story I was told by my mom, they were making a a, a wall like a park and they failed to put um, a, a, like a, a wall around it, protecting, you know, kids from coming on. So my brother climbed the building and fell, broke his legs. So my mother, my mother had a lawsuit going on for a very long time. But during this time, my mother had gotten into substance abuse. Um, things weren't stable. We were moving a lot. Um, and it turns out the lawyer had won the case f- for them, but he couldn't find them anywhere. You know, he couldn't find my mother and all like that. So one day, my brother, out of because he was having a hard time, he had a baby coming. You know, he reached out to uh, his name was Mr. Gertzog. I remember. Um, he's Jewish. He reached out to Mr. Gorsak. He went to his office saying, you know, that he needed help. Can he give him like some upfront money? And and Ms. Dr. Gorsak said, what do you mean? I've been trying to look for you. Where have you guys been? You won the lawsuit. So since my brother was of age now, he, they gave it, him the money rather than my mother because mm. he's, he's of age now. So, of course, he didn't know how to act. You know, he went, got married real fast, went shopping. He's eating out all the time, different places driving around all the time. So the mixture of just eating, I mean, you're coming with real poor. So coming from nothing to now, you can just eat everywhere you want, get steak and shrimp and little by little, it just started coming on. And at first it, it looked good. At first it was like, you know, when he hit like 220, he looked nice and husky, like Chris looks good. But then it just wasn't stopping. And it just kept going and going and going. And, um, you know, we all knew that my brother dealt with depression um, my mother had was taken him to, um, psychiatry from a very young age. Um, so we kind of figured out that he thought he's like a, you know, people depressed, they eat, eat a lot, like comfort. Me, yeah. I got the issues of yeah. depression and yeah. I love to eat. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's, it's comforting, you know, it's, it's so, so then the fame came and that, that just made it even more. Now you now you now he's sleeping less because you know they're always performing and all that. Yeah. So he's up more. So what happens when you up more? You're gonna eat more, and uh, uh, you know it, it, that's what happened. And um, was he always gifted on the microphone? Oh my God, yes. I, I would say yes because well, actually, I don't know if I ever mentioned this before. Maybe I have. Maybe I didn't. But he wanted to be an R&B singer. Really? That's what he wanted. To, yeah, he didn't. He didn't want to be rapping in the beginning. I, I'm talking about before Liza, before he met the crew. I'm talking about when he was before the fame at home. Who he wanted he to be a to? singer. He, he man, he wanted to be Albie Shore so bad. Oh wow! Okay, okay. Yeah, he he was getting Albie Shore's hair. He was cutting cutting the the goatee just like him and everything. Yeah, he 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 thought he was the Puerto Rican Albie Shore. Yeah, yeah, because Albie so, Shore had it he, lit at that time. Yeah. Yeah, so he'll be trying to sing in the house, but my brother's singing skills was not not good, not good, not good, not not singing, not singing. <laughs> but he was, but he was very, very um, deep into the hip hop music. Like he, you know, he used to love. Um, 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 I'm trying to remember everybody. Okay, Eric B. Rakim, and you know all those artists that were out then. And then he started getting into the rhythm of it, and. That was it. One day he came home, bitty bopping, and he now is now is no longer singing. I want to be a rapper, but he wants to be an R and B singer. <laughs> That's crazy to even think about. Um, <laughs> did he tell you when he first met Fat Joe? 
Um, you know, so funny. I actually met Joe before him. Um, I was working at Freddy's in his clothing store because I actually started working. I was working under the table. I wasn't even allowed to work. I was 13 and a half and I got a job in uh, in Third Avenue in the Bronx working at Freddy's. And Joe, when he was first coming up, he would always come in there to shop and things like that. And I would come home and tell my brother, you know, who's in my store today? It was Fat Joe. And he was like, oh, man, if you see him, you know, to, you know, tell him, tell him that, you know, I rap, whatever. I was like, yeah, but I don't know him like that, Chris. You know, he comes in to buy stuff. But I don't know him. And then one day my brother got opportunity to meet him. Um, I wasn't around, but my brother got the opportunity to meet him and um, my brother spit for him. And from what I'm from what I heard, you know, Joe liked them and, you know, they that was it. There was a bond there that I built. The rest was history. Um, yeah. Have has it dawned on you yet that you are the sister to hip hop royalty? That you are in some way part of the hip hop fabric forever? You know what? I've always been. I've always been humble about it. Um, I, I try to. I try to give examples. Like I, I've had friends come over that I that I've been friends with for a long time. Um, come over to my house and then notice the plaque on the wall, and they'll go. Nicole, why you got a plaque of Big Pun? And then I'll say that was my brother. They're like, you never told me that was your brother. Why you never told me? Wow. And I and I'll be like, I didn't, I didn't think I had. You know, I I figured if you found out. She's like, oh my god, if that was my brother, I would say it. Um, I also had a, a housewarming party. Um, I bought a house in 2019, and I had a housewarming, and I had people from my job come, and one of them notices too, and I'm like, that's my brother. And they were like, oh my god, really? I loved him, you know. But I, I don't say nothing. The only t the only time that I used to actually say it was when he first came out. When I was in college, I was you know young. I like, that's my brother. That's my brother. But as I started to get older, um, I didn't like the attention. I actually had a did my whole arm here. My whole arm was my brother's face this year. It's I actually wait. had it removed. Really? Yeah, I had it removed. Yeah, because I got tired of the because for example, when I I would go out and I wear a tank top. They'll be like, oh, why you have a picture of Big Pun? And then I'll start the conversation. I was my brother and I got tired of it. So I, I went ahead and got it removed and I got I got it. Um, I got a rose put all over it. So you don't see him anymore. Um, suggestions, everyone, don't get tattoos. I hate them. <laughs> I actually got a tattoo because of him. No, true story. Yeah. But when he was, if you want to hear a story, when he was going to Duke University to lose weight, uh, he was sending Liza to the tattoo shop with him to get a piercing right here. She was gonna get one and she was gonna get her name and he was gonna get something done. He says, Nikki, why don't you get a tattoo? I said, no, Chris, uh, I don't like that stuff. I like my skin clear and nice. He was like, oh, can I curse? Yes. He said, oh, stop being a pussy. Gotta get a tattoo. And I'm like, I was like, Chris, but it's not me. He was like, you love me? You love me? I said, yeah, Chris, I love you. Because if you love me, you get it. I'm like, all right. So I agreed to this dumbass earring right here. You know how retarded I looked, but I did it for him. Mm. So Liza gets Liza gets the gold earring, and I get it. So I feel so awkward because it's not me. Then he was like, "Nikki, get your name. Just, just you know, something simple. Your name." So I leave there with my name right here. So I left like a whole new person because <laughs> I never you walked in just I regular never, Nicole, and you walked out a biker. Yeah, I walked out a biker. So you know, but then what happened was I ended up with my name because of him. I ended up with this piercing that was retarded looking to me. It looks good on people, but some things I just don't want on me. So um, when he passed away, thinking with impulsion, without thinking, I was like, what can I What can I do in remembrance of my brother? What can I do? I said, you know what? He loves tattoos. I'm going to get a tattoo of him. So I went ahead and did that, you know, in memory of my brother. Mm -hmm. And it was okay. It was okay, you know, doing the 20s, you know, it was, it was okay. But after a while, I didn't like it anymore. I didn't like it. And I had it um, professionally done. Uh, uh, someone that she who was recommended in Miami um, to remove it. Um, what do you think puns rise and success has meant to the to the Latino community then and now? I think not only the Latino community to them, but to all. You know, he's showing them that you could come from nothing and and, and make something. You got to move. You have to have the hunger. Nothing's going to fall in your lap. You have to try hard to get to where he was. He sacrificed a lot. He, he went a long time with no furniture, you know, no nothing because 
he he knew that he was going to be who he became yeah. one day and and he sacrificed everything you know you have to you have to take risk you know you have to take risk you have to have faith you know but don't give up don't give up nothing's gonna land in your lap but if you want it it's there call it manifest it and it will how, happen how long did it take you to get excuse me how long did it take you to get back some sense of normalcy after your brother passed away um i would say in my my 20s, no, I would say no. When I, when I got into my 30s, things started to feel a little bit more normal. And I think all of it has to do with me trans, trying to transform myself back, removing, you know, getting his tattoo covered up, you know, not telling nobody that that's my brother, you know, things like that. Just being low key. Um, we see a ton of well wishes right now coming out for DMX, who um, is going through it right now. Um, when you see all the celebrities uh, praying for DMX and sending out tweets, what goes through your mind when you see that? Oh, my God. Um, I mean, in general, I, I'm praying that he comes through, that he's that he's OK. Um, it kind of resurfaces, you know, the feeling with my brother. The only difference is that I there was no moment where he, at least he was in a hospital for a little while. It was kind of like he was fine one moment. And the next minute he's gone, you know, so it kind of, you know, brings back feelings, of course, but um, I'm definitely pushing for DMX and hoping that, you know, every, miracles do happen. So don't give up. They do. I mean, when I heard about your brother, it kind of broke my heart. It was very sudden. It wasn't that long period of time where we could hope and pray, right? The news yeah. just hit and he was yeah. gone. And I remember, I don't know if I remember the exact moment. I just remember the feeling like, you lying to me this didn't happen yeah like to yeah to just all of a sudden because he was so important right? yeah he had this huge personality yeah and lyrically he was i call him scientist yeah clearly he was at the highest level of lyricism you know what i mean yeah um and then he had that kind of you know big guy fly guy persona you know the ladies liked them mm -hmm. you know what i mean he had he had everything going for him um and he was different he stood out mm -hmm. he didn't sound like yeah. anybody else and so when you yeah. lose somebody like that so quick it was it was certainly a shock to the system um a lot of people yeah. who might be watching this video right now maybe uh they went out they wasn't outside at the time yeah. When, when this happened and they may be coming into their, you know, late 20s or early 30s right now. Um, so if anybody out there who's, who wasn't around at the time, I could tell you that the, the news of Big Pun's death kind of reverberated in an incredibly um, epic fashion across the whole world. It was a big deal. So when Tupac died, when Biggie died, it was, it was the same thing when Pun died. It was the yeah. same thing, you yeah. know. Um, it was a gut punch and I'm editorializing. I, I apologize. I'm just going back memories in my own head as yeah. to um, what it felt like at that time. Yeah. And the thing, the thing is, and the thing is that my brother, cause our, because we were the only ones raised together, although we had another sibling, my sister was raised by my grandmother and then his other siblings, he lost contact with him was reunited later, later in, the, in, the time, in days, later in time. Um, but I was the only one raised with him. So like his story is my story. Like everything that he'd been through, I've been through. So I I know very well how he feels. You know, he just wanted, he wanted to be loved because we didn't, we didn't have that growing up. It was no stability. You know, we didn't feel loved. We, we didn't feel prioritized. So he wanted to feel just like I did. He just wanted to feel loved and, and, and included and wanted and acknowledged. And the only difference between him and I was that and I think that's what, where the domesticness came in with Liza. Mm. Rather than just let love come natural, he felt like, you know what? If I don't feel love, I'm going to make him love me. Mm. You know, I'm going to make her stay here. I'm going to make her rather than let it come naturally and, 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 and sweetly and nicely. Um, it was more like, you know, if I, I, I'm not, I, I need you. You have to love me type thing. You know, he just wanted to be loved so much. You know, believe it or not, he was like a big teddy bear. It's like two sides. It's like he had a dark side and then he has such a loving side, you know? 
And the dark side was 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 the fact that he didn't want to feel rejected. You know, he wanted to, he just wanted to feel like he was the our knight in shining armor. You know, mm-hmm. even when as a brother, he wants to feel like he's just the number one brother. Um, and I get it. I understand him. And I just wanted him, her as his wife, and being together so long, I thought maybe she would understand at least that, you know, just kind of understand that, you know, I don't know. You talked about and the I'm fact different. That, that 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 pun like yourself searching for love, and that's one of his priorities was to find that. That you that you guys didn't come from a place where you had that growing up. I want to ask you about yourself. Have you found peace after all this time? Um, I I would say that I finally found peace. Um, you know, within with within the last maybe five six years. But I'll be honest with you, when my brother passed away, I felt like a lost soul. Like I felt like I was just. How do you explain? I felt like I was just like on the earth, but not really here. Mm-hmm. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And uh, I feel like that for a very, very, very long time. Kind of feeling like, you know, is this real? Is he really dead? You know, is this a dream? And I escaped. I, and I think that's why I've been so successful um, scholarly because that was school's my escape. School's like where I go to not think about nothing else and read. And I put all my energy into school. You know, and I think that's why I did so good in school because that was my escape. And I want to drill down on this because I respect the answer that you just gave, but I really want to know because, like you, the situations that Pun had with Liza, you said they arise out of the fact that he was so desperately looking for love Mm -hmm. and that you guys didn't come up with that. Aside from having to get over what happened to your brother in your own personal life, Mm -hmm. have you been able to find that thing that? you and your brother have been looking for? Um, I never, I never, to this day, I don't feel like I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I love myself. <laughs> I love myself. Got you. Got you. Um, does, Pun, does, his, does Pun's immediate family receive any royalties from his work? His son or his wife to this day, or is Liza, Liza does Liza to this does. day still okay. Um, mm-hmm. Is it your intention to work to spread Pun's legacy? Like, is that something you're going to be continuing to do, or would you rather just kind of get this out in the open, hopefully find a resolution to it, and just kind of move on from it? Yeah, yeah. I just, I just want closure. I just want her to get Liza to the test. Let it prove that she did or didn't um, have anything to do with it, and let this so I can move on. So we can move on. Um. Well, uh, Nicole Rodriguez, thank you so much for coming through and, and having this conversation with me today. We do hope that you know at the end of all this, we do find some uh, resolution with you, um, his ex-wife, and, and and the rest of the family and those concerned and, and interested parties. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Appreciate you. What the fuck was poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. The intro king. It's Powers. The all